Hello, today my discussion will focus on electrochemistry, specifically cell potential. What you are seeing now is the galvanic cell, or otherwise known as the voltic cell, after the Italian scientist Luigi Galvani and Alessandro Volta. The essential components of a galvanic cell includes a zinc electrode, which is immersed in the zinc sulfate ZnSO4 solution, and a copper electrode, which is immersed in a copper 2 sulfate CuSO4 solution. And separate electrode compartments, zinc is oxidized to zinc ions, Zn2 positive, while copper ions, Cu2 negative, is reduced to copper. These reactions take place simultaneously with the transfer of electrons, between them occurring through a conducting medium, an external wire otherwise known as the salt bridge. A simple salt bridge consists of an inverted U-tube containing an inert electrolyte solution such as potassium chloride KCl or ammonium nitrate in HO4 in O3. The openings of the U-tube are loosely plugged with cotton balls to prevent the potassium chloride solution from flowing into the compartments while allowing the anions and the cations to move across. Electrons flow externally from the zinc electrode at the anode to the copper electrode at the cathode. As the reaction progresses, a constant flow of electrons occur, thereby generating electricity. The conventional notation for representing galvanic cells is the cell diagram. For example, in the galvanic cell, we assume that the concentrations of zinc ions Zn2 positive and copper ions Cu2 positive are one molarity. The cell diagram is therefore Zn solid bar Zn2 positive ions enclosed in parentheses one molarity double bar Cu2 positive ions enclosed in parentheses one molarity bar Cu solid, enclosed in parentheses, one atmosphere. The single vertical line represents a phase boundary. Thus, between the solid zinc electrode and the zinc two positive ions from the zinc sulfate solution, we draw a line to show the phase boundary. This is similarly done between the copper ions from the copper sulfate solution and solid copper electrode. Remember that there are three phases, solid, liquid, and gas. Representing the salt bridge is a double vertical line, which is placed between the two processes. Take note, the components in the anode is written first, while the components in the cathode is written after the double lines. This arrangement is based on the order in which the electrons move from the anode to the cathode. An electric current flows from the anode to the cathode because there is a difference in the electrical potential energy between the electrodes. Thus, the amount of cell difference is referred to as the cell potential, cell voltage, or electromotive force, EMF, E. This amount is not a measure of force since it depends on the nature of electrodes and the ions as well as on the concentration of the ions and the temperature at which the cell is operated. To calculate the cell potential, the equation is EO of the cell equals EO of the cathode minus the EO of the anode with units in terms of volts. The standard reduction potential is denoted by E superscript zero. It is the voltage associated with a reduction reaction at an electrode when all solutes are one molarity or one N, and all gases are at one atmosphere or one ATN. Hence, the superscript zero denotes standard state conditions. The hydrogen electrode is called the standard hydrogen electrode. She or SHE with a standard reduction potential of zero as shown in the table. The hydrogen electrode serves as the reference for determining the relative potentials of all other electrodes. FYI, the E superscript zero values apply to the half-cell reactions, 
as read in the forward left to right direction. Thus, from the table, the half cell reactions are Cu2 positive plus 2E negative into Cu solid and Zn into Zn2 positive plus 2E negative. FYI, the more positive cell potential, the greater the tendency for the substance to be reduced. So given the half cell reaction, Cu2 positive plus 2E negative into Cu, the table also shows that the standard reduction potential is equal to positive 0.3419 volts. On the other hand, for Zn2 positive, plus 2E negative into Zn, the standard reduction potential is equal to negative 0.7628 volts. Negative 0.7628 volts is lower than positive 0.3419 volts. Thus, Cu is a stronger oxidizing agent, meaning it has the greater tendency to be reduced than zinc. Given this situation, zinc will be oxidized in the anode while copper will be reduced in the cathode. Keep in mind that under steady state conditions, the oxidizing agents which are shown on the left hand side of the table increases in strength from bottom to top and the reducing agents which are shown on the right hand side of their half reaction increase in strength from top to bottom. FYI, the half-cell reactions are reversible. So a half-cell reaction can either become an oxidation reaction or reduction reaction depending on the conditions. Take for example the half-cell reaction of the galvanic cell Zn2 positive plus 2E negative into Zn. As explained previously, Zn will be oxidized so the half-cell reaction shown in the table is reversed to Zn into Zn2 positive plus 2E negative. To predict which will be the oxidation or reduction reaction, you can use the diagonal rule. FYI, under standard state conditions, any species on the left of a given half cell reaction will react spontaneously with a species that appears on the right of any half cell reaction located below it in the table. Recall that the first half cell Cu2 positive plus 2E negative into Cu is located above the second half cell reaction Zn2 positive plus 2E into Zn. Thus, Copper, which is on the left side of the first reaction, will be spontaneously reduced by zinc, which is on the right side of the second reaction, to form Zn2 positive and Cu. The overall reaction is therefore Zn plus Cu2 positive, enclosed in parentheses, one molarity into Zn2 positive, enclosed in parentheses, one molarity, plus C. Having identified already which reaction is the oxidation reaction and which reaction is the reduction reaction, we can now calculate the cell potential. Thus, EO cell is equals to EO cathode minus EO anode. The cathode is where the reduction reaction occurs, while the anode is where the oxidation reaction occurs. Substituting the values, the EO of the cell is equal now to 0.3419 volts minus negative 0.7628 volts. Simplifying, we get positive 1.1047 volts. FYI, changing the stoichiometric coefficients of a half cell reaction does not change the value of the cell potential. The reason for this is because the value of the cell potential is an intensive property. 
So if I multiply the reaction with 2, the stoichiometric coefficients in the half cell reaction becomes 2Zn into 2Zn2 positive plus 4E negative. What will be the cell potential of the reaction? 1, 2, and 3, and the winner is... Finally, let me say this to you again and again. You don't have to love chemistry, but the journey will be much easier if you open your heart. Think easy. That's why I'm easy. I'm easy like Sunday morning. Easy, guys. The answer is it is still negative 0.7628 volts. Bye and enjoy the journey.